I talk about our uh, campaign because uh, we have been the, the few people to do campaigning in Germany. And I start with an uh, overview over the German situation when we first started in 2001. So we had, Germany had a screening program since 71, which is really early, and I think it was the only one at that time in Europe. But uh, it, uh, the, the, um, ray, um, oh my God, <laughs> the, co the participation rates had remained all the time very, very low, and mortality was um, within the highest in inside Europe was 58%. So um, we immediately knew that we had to take a different approach and educate people uh, to understand uh, that screening uh, does a benefit. So we designed an innovative advertising and TV spot campaign and uh, placed the ads in all of the Berlin media magazines during six or eight months, I guess. So uh, I would show you the ads uh, broadcasting a TV spot, which was um, broadcasted pro bono on all German channels. And we were told by the doctors that this uh, TV spot was so impressive that the people came into the practice and said, we had. We had seen that spot, and we want the colonoscopy. Um, our main goal, as you all know, was raise a maximum of public awareness. And these were the first ads um, an advertising company had developed for us. You see these round uh, objects, and you have this size is the um, size of the, of the non-discovered tumor in, in her or his collar. So we, these were the ads appearing in all of the magazines, and it was about 50 different magazines. <clears throat> As you heard this morning already, we uh, had then the first national conference of stakeholders in uh, Munich, and um, really everybody was there, including David Lieberman, and we put out a Munich declaration it claimed that colonoscopy should be the primary screening tool. Every uh, gastroenterologist had said, we have to have a colonoscopy screening. And uh, that we uh, aim to reduce the mortality about 50% within five years. We knew that wasn't doable, but you have to pit up, uh, put out figures like this to get it done. Then in March 2002, we put together the first Colon Cancer Awareness Month, and it was some institutions, I had asked them, the biggest uh, cancer institutions in Germany, if they wanted to support this effort, and they all stepped in. So we built a network of stakeholders, because I thought networking was a very crucial point from the very beginning, and it's maybe one of the most crucial points for advocacy. We built a network of media partners as well, and uh, the most astonishing thing what happened was that we uh, arranged a cooperation with the largest German tabloid, which reaches 12 million readers a day, and they covered the whole colon cancer awareness month. Every day they had something about colon cancer screening inside. Then um, our work was to do the communication work, communication strategies. We run press conference in large cities. We, that is all what we are doing still now, but that was what we did from the very beginning. We developed these partnerships, arranging interviews with celebrities, and I myself went into almost every talk show in the country, so everybody knew my face at that time. I don't do that any longer, but at that time, I think it was quite efficient. And um, like uh, Katie already said, we even uh, succeeded to uh, convince a celebrity to have her colos colonoscopy shown in a, a popular TV format. And this caused in Germany a kind of Kurik effect you would see in a minute here. 25% uh, were the rates going up of colonoscopy, just because of 
this one colorectal cancer month, all the media campaign, the TV shows, the talk shows. And it's quite impressive figures, 18 million TV viewers in a country like Germany and three, 350 million readers just in one month. And the um, direct result was that in October 2002, we got the colonoscopy program. So as, as far as I know, we are the only country who has it for the whole country, for the whole population, because 90% uh, of the German population have uh, a general health coverage and 10% have a private coverage. So everybody really can get a colonoscopy paid. We developed new partnerships. I don't go through this, you can, you can uh, see. We reached out to almost every institution and said, okay, this one could be one uh, to partner with. And uh, I think a very good thing is there is a, a GP's daily newspaper in Germany. It's really a daily newspaper with the news for, ex ex especially for the GPs. And uh, they do a lot of uh, co cooperation with us now. So uh, this, this year, the, the months was every day had, they had an interview or something in their newspaper. So the GPs were bombed with the information. Um, our role in, in all these uh, partnerships is that we are mostly the initiators and uh, then providing logistic support and uh, since we don't have money to pay all this we invented uh, this year a, a new service uh, we tell the people they can get leaflets we provide the leaflets the design the text and the posters and they can order it at a service provider a professional provider and then they have to pay the provider and they can even put the logo on on it so this is how we do this now that general practitioners can order leaflets for their practice. Then uh, another column, our, um, our work is, um, is based on, is uh, companies. We started with a birder company in 2002 with 5,000 employees, handed out uh, on their workplace the FOBT and 40% of the people responded, they, they uh, undertook the FOBT. And then after that, we, we decided to address uh, of the largest German companies, all the human relation directors. And um, we have been developing really close uh, relationships with all these companies. They phone us, so there's always somebody at our phone to advise them how to do what. And we created a manual explaining them step by step how to successfully conduct a program for their employees. And uh, the re result in 2009 is that half of the large German companies like Mercedes and Allianz and all these large companies have included uh, screening programs into their uh, normal health programs. And every year, two to three million employees accomplish the FOBT, and they mostly do it now with IFOBT. What, what is the good thing about it is that you especially reach men who don't go to the doctors, because they are sent the information to their workplace. And you reach the young people who never would have thought about family risk. So this is the two reasons why we do it, and you see the cost-benefit analysis has been analyzed, and it's, uh, it's good for the companies. This was then uh, the, second, um, the se second approach uh, for, for advertising, and now we put in the uh, celebrity. So left side, you maybe know him. He was a Formula car racer. He is now retired at the age of 32 or something. <laughs> <laughs> and and the right is is the, the late night talk show host. Um, and they all had their own uh, text, so we could reach it, reach different target groups with it 
advertising campaign. We, are, we were running these uh, advertising campaigns within, uh, for some years. Then this is the new advertising campaign. I feel good means uh, I, I can't feel good but still uh, have cancer and I can only be sure that uh, if, if I get tested. And uh, we used this line because of the TV spot which uh, underlies the James Brown song, I feel good. And these people are dancing in the TV spot. <laughs> and the man is a very, in Germany, very famous heavyweight box champion. So you see, uh, we, we address the, uh, all the issues like different target groups and especially men. If you look what uh, you can achieve through advocacy and something like uh, implementing a colorectal cancer awareness month, uh, then you see all every uh, people is good informed now, um, and they know there are good methods for early detection. People over 50, m most of them in the meantime, have talked with a doctor about screening. But still, three out of four are sitting and waiting. They don't go. I mean, the thing is, that that's what, what our conference is about. How do we motivate them? They haven't learned that they should go for screening if they have no pain. They are waiting till they get pain. <laughs> And uh, another thing which um, really struck me was that three, uh, two out of three believed that if uh, they get colon cancer, modern medicine would be that good as to heal them. So there need, is obviously needed some different concepts for this. Then another column of our work is handing out the Felix Berder Awards. We give it in uh, five different uh, categories, and uh, I want to give you the example of this year. Uh, public health insurer invited the insurance with just one letter for colonoscopy, and he got an immediate increase of 80% in colonoscopy. So he got one of the awards. Then we had the city of Stuttgart, which did a wonderful job in educating the Stuttgart population. Uh, you couldn't escape in Stuttgart in, in this one month of, of this topic. <laughs> and uh, we give a company award. This is very successful. Uh, they don't get money, they just get the honor. And these are people who never get honored for their work. So I can see that this is the most effective award we, we hand out. Then we give uh, an award to journalists, and this year it went to the Turkish tabloid. I couldn't read the article, but it was on the front page. <laughs> and uh, they, sent it, they sent us a translation. Uh, it covers the whole of the Turkish-speaking community. In, and we have a large community. It's about 6% of the population, or even, even larger. So um, that was the first time that the journalist, uh, the, a Turkish tabloid, um, addressed this issue for the, for the readers and a celebrity award. Here are some pictures. Left is the uh, company who got the award, so they feel happy, you can see. <laughs> and on the right side, the, the man on the right, this is the, the, in, uh, the, the uh, CEO of the insurance company uh, who got the award because of sending an invitation letter to his insurance. And here is our box champion handing the, the celebrity award to a Premier League soccer trainer. Uh, he has colon cancer. He's just grown his hair again and he's going, he's a, uh, one of the very few in Germany to go to media and tell them I have colon cancer and go and get screened. So he got rewarded for this. Altogether, we have an excellent program. We have little compliance. Uh, it's free of charge. We have a good infrastructure. People don't have to travel for very long to go to a doctor. It's quality assured, quality controlled, uh, ad advocacy groups, 
why is it only 3% of the people that uh, participate every year? So we have talked a lot today about the barriers in Germany. We have some extra barriers, which is in, in the cultural attitudes. People just are not used to act on their own authority. They have been told for so long that insurance covers everything and uh, things are only good if insurance covers. So um, if insurance don't tell them, go, they won't. The role of the GPs is um, it's everything on their shoulder. They have to counsel the patients, to refer them to the gastroenterologist. They lack appropriate training. They are not familiar with the guideline. But uh, the, the um, society of the gastroenterologist hasn't done so far very good, a very good job to educate them, I must tell you, Bernd. <laughs> And uh, as you all know, they don't see clarification of positive FOBTs as mandatory, at least many of them. And everyone uh, uh, supposes that 50% of the tests are thrown into the dustbin. And family history is not part of the counseling, so there are really some very heavy deficits in the program. Uh, we, we try to improve the existing program by networking. So the network of stakeholders is offici was officially registered as a non-profit charity in, 4, 000, in 2004. And we did several workshops which hadn't been done before. And uh, like for instance, we have heard about uh, colon preparation. This is such a boring thing for patients. And if I, uh, if I told doctors you have to do something, you know, oh, it's like this, you have to drink these four liters. Now we have this two liter and we have another one, uh, but uh, you have to push it, you have to start all this. <clears throat> and um, one, one of the things I'm really um, very much interested in to get it forward is initiating an organized screening program in terms of that there will be uh, invi an invitation scheme. Because uh, as you see, if you just send out one letter, um, then you get uh, another participation rate. So what has been achieved so far through the program and through advocacy? The actual figures is 73,000 uh, 73, newly diagnosed and 27,000 fatalities. And um, it's, it looks quite impressive if you look to the mortality rate going down by 20%, but on the other hand, the in incidence went up through the screening. And participation in the program, even if it's only 3%, it's 3.5 million of the eligible persons. And, uh, Altogether, in the target groups of 55 to 74, it makes 20% in the meantime. I think the most interesting uh, figure is 200,000 advanced adenoma being detected and removed. And this makes this estimated number of 15,000 cases prevented by the year 2000. And at present, the annual de decrease of fatalities is 1,000, which I think is quite nice. Thank you.